everyone. As of my recording this, um, the Inesso Championship is in the books. It's done. I went 8 and 7, mono green and standard. Jessica Creativity in historic 8 and 7, not the greatest record, 80th place. Uh, at least it's positive. Hmm. Well, so I was one of the main um, drivers of our standard testing. I did an enormous amount of, of standard testing. I tried a lot of different things that I did not share with the public until now. Um, because of course you want to keep things secret. You want to keep the tech secret. If you find a broken deck or anything like that, I, I don't want to share it on stream and so on. And yeah, um, so I was thinking I might just do a little video series with the decks that didn't quite make the cut. And here we have um, blue white control with a black splash. I already played uh, blue black control with a white splash, both Esper, just a different uh, base and removal. And uh, on stream yesterday, I played the black version and now I'm gonna show you here on YouTube the white version. So why all of a sudden Esper control? Esper control, right, against all these aggressive linear decks or against turns that just goes off and you need like three counter spells to, to to disrupt the Galvanic Iteration um, Auron's Epiphany combo. Yeah, so why Esper all of a sudden? Well, um, the format is fairly small. The smaller a format becomes, the better control decks can tune themselves to beat the format. Like basically the top decks we were thinking would be present represented at the Instant Set Championship would be mono white, is it turns or is it dragons, is it control, is it horror, like these type of decks at the very top. Mono green a little bit behind, maybe on the third place. And then a sprinkling of I don't know, some, some Chariot Magda deck or some Black Snow control or some control decks maybe. And we wanted to prepare for those top three, the two monocolor decks and is it turns. So that's only, on, and the monocolor decks are fairly similar strategies, right? They're playing creatures, creature removal is good. And the turn stack, of course, creature removal is bad, but um, counter spells are very good, at least in game one. But also in game two, because one of the main reasons control was really bad against turns was not only they have a ton of card advantage, flashback spells, and all that jazz, they also play, yeah, Memory Deluge, for example, is a, is a huge one. They also played Hermit, Malevent Hermit in the sideboard, right? Our little friend down here that you can, oops, I <laughs> just removed one copy. Let me add that back in. Um, Malevent Hermit, which is just, oh, it's so good against counter spells, right? It's just, Gives you a counter to counter back, and then out of the flashback, it just sh flat disturb. Sorry, shuts off all the counter spells um, that your opponent might have. It's just really good, and that card doesn't see play anymore because of Spike Fit Hazard in all the blue red decks. Nobody's plays Hermit anymore. It's not good enough in the mirror. Nobody's playing blue black whatever control decks anyway. So why would you have that card, right? You just rather play Test of Talents, Disdainful Stroke, something that hits Gold Plan Dragons and Leers or whatever. Um, so this card has been gone and is this card going away and people also reducing the number of memory deluge in favor of unexpected windfall which is just a faster crazier more powerful card right unexpected windfall just lets you do powerful things very quickly but unexpected windfall has one weakness compared to something like memory deluge it's kind of bad against counter spells you have to discard a card up front and then if it gets countered it's just straight up two for one so that's risky. And um, yeah, so the configuration of blue red turns as people played it, and then also they played creatures like horror, which is kind of bad. Horror is not so good against removal, right? Like you need a ton of mana to, to protect your horror then. And if, if you do, then like they have another removal and then you have to play horror again and they remove and you bounce again. It's just so slow against like a controlling deck with vanishing versus, right? Um, so, the, the the positioning for Esper against these turn stack was actually kind of good and we tried it out and it worked out. Yeah, we, we won a lot with this Esper configuration against turns or against these is it control variants. Um, reason being we didn't quite end up on the deck uh, at the end was the mono white matchup. Mono white just with Talia, Paladin class, Fleeting Spirit, Guardian of Faith, what have you, all these efficient fast creatures, Faces Haven, Luminary Aspirants, you, you, name them all. 
it's just so fast and efficient and good against counter spells <laughs> and we have a lot of counter spells in the main deck post spell would take a lot of them out as you can see we're playing Rayf and Femblement three times in this list this list really tries to to hate on the white matchup post board and make it doable it is doable post board it's still tough the mono green matchup you get carried by Doomscar and Edgar um, so that one's that one's all right I would say um, and yeah I mean I could talk a little bit about the, about the card choices we have Vanishing Verse just the, the very best removal spell in the format kills kills things cleanly exalts Old Grove Troll exalts Chariot Ranger class what have you exalts most of the things in is it turns right um, we got Portable Hole just an early tempo play make it make it cheap good with Celestius by the way Celestius is also the, the key piece in the puzzle of this deck you play against an aggro deck oh my god you have these test of talents you have these washaways these clunky counter spells cycle them away draw loot put it in the graveyard draw another card you play against is it turns Celestius lets you put your doom scars your portable holes into the graveyard cycle those away Celestius is really this like neat piece in the middle of the deck that, that makes the, the pre-board games easier um, when you draw the wrong half of your deck, right? You can just get rid of those cards. And it helps with the mana, of course, too. So, yeah. Um, playing counter spells, wash away, excellent against turns. Saw it coming just as a one-off because of Fortel. Give the opponent a little bit more to think about in open deck list of environment. If you're not playing open deck list, you could just play it wash away instead of a sword coming i think it is the slightly better card um but yeah we we got siphon inside just early land drops making it's good against is it it's not so good against the aggro decks but it's just it, it can make you land drops at worst case and um it can maybe fetch you a nice threat or whatever we got memory to lose just one of the best card draw spells because you draw one copy and you're good to go for the rest um, of the of the game basically against any of the aggro decks against turns two right yeah if you have that one flashback that's that should put you so much over the top in terms of card advantage um but we only wanted to have three because four is like a little bit too much of them of of like you don't want to draw it in multiples necessarily you just need that one copy behold is a little nicer because you can foretell it on turn two that's why we're playing that one copy of behold we also have another behold in the sideboard i'm a little bit above that but here you can see it um so yeah and we're playing edgar as the the the, the ground blocker against the aggro decks um edgar really especially against green it's just the, uh, a wall they can't really get through it they can trade with it but then it just comes back spits out one once it buys you so much time it it is a win condition in itself um against mono white is less good but still it stabilizes it's really nice against faces haven too right like faces haven can get you sometimes at the very very end after uh, you you committed a lot of resources on the creatures and then edgar just stops faces haven basically in its track yeah um we got the two test of talents really wanted to make that is a turns matchup good so we're playing two of those in the main deck obviously awkward drawing them against aggro but that's just that's just what you, you have to do and then the whole breaker horror is um not amazing against stuff like mono white you really don't want to dare but mono green it can finish the game can stabilize you and against is it turns if it's not the best card especially game one they have like fading hope and so on but it gets the game over at some point and that's all we wanted to have because if you don't have that in your deck against is it turns game goes on for infinite time and then maybe they can set it up in a way that they uh, can galvanic and copy and boo 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 and go off and whole break horror just puts a clock on the match essentially like huh there's a ticking bomb if it's turn 12 i'm going to slam this every turn and at some point you won't have enough bonds anymore and then also good for if it's turn 12 they go for galvanic epiphany or what have you you can play horror in response and then play a counter spell and bounce the copy uh, of of Aaron's Epiphany with the horror, right? It's it's it it, it is sort of, sort of like a counter spell in itself with another counter spell for for the Epiphany combo. That's obviously very late stages of the game, but if you play against turns today, which we will, we will play some games that might come up. That you know, it's just a draw go, draw go, draw go. Games go easily until there are fifteen lands in play on each side. Um, sideboard wise, yeah, we have some more counter spells for the Izzet matchup. We have some hermits. Um, 
and we have another Edgar. You barely can see it because I'm in front of it. Um, just for, for the aggro matchups. <laughs> the set was fairly simple, right? Blue cards for the blue matchups. Um, yeah, black and white cards for the aggro matchups. And we tag out color spells against aggro and so on. Okay, I've talked enough about this deck. This is a sweet one. I can recommend playing it if you are into control. And um, yeah, let's jump into the matches and uh, hopefully get some Ws. Esper White. And yeah, I was thinking about making this an entire series because I have some other decks on my mind I wanted to show you, especially the Leer decks I worked a lot on. We tried all kinds of Leer decks. A teammate of mine actually ended up playing one of them um, based on an iteration I had, made some changes at the very end, and it went 6 and 2 in standard. So that's very impressive by Sam Rolf with Blue Black Leer. I uh, made ninth place. Unfortunately, just just tiebreaker, like tiebreaker percentages short of making top eight at the Innistrad Chat Championship. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that deck is also very nice and fun to play if you're looking for like a bluish control deck that's not turns. Watching old is our opponents and we're waiting for them right now. Ashiok. I love Ashiok. Ashiok's... Mm. I, uh, when I started out playing Magic, Ashiok was one of the cards I was playing with. Okay, we're on the draw. We don't have black mana. We can Doomscarf Hotel and we have a Celestial. So if we draw any land, we have all our mana. We have a Doomscarf Hotel on turn two. Oh, and we're playing against white, okay. So Doomscarf Hotel on turn two is very good there. Hall of Storm Giants, number two. There's certainly um, awkwardness with Hall of Storm Giants between like Vanishing Verse and so on. Yeah, I mean, with Talia on the battlefield, I won't be able to cast Doomscar on turn three anyways if I draw a white land. So it seems reasonable to play Hall of Storm Giants. Yeah, there's certainly um, debate if you want to have this card or not in your deck, like or, or how many you want. Well, I was talking about the white matchup. When they're on the play, <laughs> they go one, two, three. <laughs> yeah, it's... It's difficult. Um, I have to draw a white source anyways, which then will give me four mana. So I'm just gonna destroy the utmost damage producing threat, if that makes any sense. And uh, hopefully we draw a white land here. Uh, that's... <laughs> Unfortunate. Yeah. One of the reasons I chose to play mono green in the end, you know, mono green is just it's just so stock and safe. You know what I mean? Um, and it's so consistent. One of the reasons why I didn't like this Esper deck very much um, was, I mean, I think it's a good deck. And um, one of our teammates played the black version of this deck and went very well. They they went well in other tournaments. They they didn't have the best historic win rate. So they didn't make day two at the Innistrad set championship, but it's it's a good deck. Um, but one of the reasons I didn't like it, it's just it's free color, you know? We have the, like blue red turns, two color, clean mana base. And free color, you're definitely sacrificing something there. The mana is not super easy. So test of talents, syncopate, wash away, saw it coming, gone, hole breaker horror, all gone. Revelry, absence, portable hole, triple ray, power kill, Edgar, so now we have options. We can play Syncopate, we can play another Behold, we can play Hermit. Um, that's essentially it. Siphon Insight is fine. It picks up a creature from the opponent that we might block with. Other than Stealing and other Lean, for example, is kind of nice. Um, I think on the play, I like to go with a Behold to just have that extra card advantage because our deck, as you can see, we actually don't have much of a late game right now. We really want to draw one of these Edgars. The Kraken is just so bad against removal, like Valorous Stance. I don't want to... Most people have Valorous Stance possible, so the Kraken is just too expensive. But yeah, give us a little bit more card advantage. When I'm on the, on the draw, I like to maybe play a Hermit over some of the card advantage. Um, yeah. Yeah, 
I think that's good. Because on a draw, it's kind of nice to have that extra body on turn two um, to perhaps block like an usher off the fall. And all. It, it's not perfect, but it also has disturb, so it comes back as a two two. It's it's all right. This this hand is ah uh, this hand is tough. I mean, I got Eddie on turn four. I got the Chalestius, but if they have Talia, I can't even play Chalestius. I don't have any cheap removal. I have all my mana, though. Um, I I don't know. This hand is difficult for me to judge. I also have a Fear of Ruin in my mana base, so that's very good against um, Faces Haven. I think on the draw, I would certainly mulligan this. On the play... I think I have to mulligan, as it, it hurts to mulligan this hand, because I have the mana to face it. Just give me give me one cheap interaction and I would keep this hand. Tough one. Okay. Interesting, interesting, interesting. So I think I'm just going to play this for Tell on turn two. Talia is going to be very awkward again uh, because we really want that Celestius on turn three. Yeah, Talia is just a beating. I mean, if if you're not playing red with Spike Food Hazard and Cinderclasm, Talia is annoying. It's just, yeah. Okay. So now we have a nice turn. We can go Celestius into Remover Spell. Pass the turn, and if they just commit to the board with like Adeline, I won't even use my uh, Ray of Enfendlement here. I will just Doomscar their board away. Power of Doomscar here. Pretty strong. Just a very strong card. Doesn't see much play um, because white control isn't very supported. But hey, if you want to play Doomscar, I can I can recommend this deck. It's it's good against turns, and um, it's a lot of fun to play. Uh huh. That's a pretty good uh, rebuild. Wow. Uh, I have a bunch of removal uh, waiting. A card that I'm a little bit afraid of is Faces Haven. I don't have an answer for that right now. Um, I'm also a little bit. I don't, you don't know how many Guardian of Faiths they have. You know, the free two that can uh, phase things out. I'll just do it main phase. I don't want to run into that. <laughs> I got blown out too often by that card. It looks like we're stabilizing with 11 life. We had Usher of the Fallen. Uh, no. Yeah, they have Ash of the Fallen. We got Celestius to draw us into more action. A little stifled on black mana, though. Um, yeah, I think this time we know they have zero cards, so we're just gonna pass the turn. Flip, a, flip to Knight. Okay, uh, yeah. So. Um. Just yeah, just let them untap. We're still in trouble. I mean, a little bit at least. Okay, so that then I'll definitely kill this because this produces a one-one. Um, oh no, the stone binder gross. Oh, we oh that's so gross. Oh my god. Um, Wow, okay. Well, okay. I'm actually in trouble, am I not? <laughs> like, I'm on four right now. Uh, oh, that's life linking. That's that's nice. We have to kill here. Gilles just flips, so we go up to five. And they have exactly four power. Just cutting the deluge. And then I can play a huge lifelinking creature. 
Never mind. Hmm. Huh. Tough. Wow. Maybe I uh, misplayed by using my Ray of Infemblement. I should have just um, killed the Luminac Aspirant. Would have that saved me more life. You know, just pass the turn and then Ray of Infemblement the Luminac Aspirant. Well, that was beating. <laughs> yeah. I mean, right before deckless submission, we tested the white matchup a bunch. Eh, yeah, I just didn't feel that great. I think the black version of the stack has a little bit of a better white matchup, to be fair. But it's not like infinitely better or anything. Um, but like the black cards, Metook Massacre especially, is a little better than uh, Doomscar, I believe. Although Doomscar is kind of nice against Elite Spellbinder, sneaking it with the Fortel under it. So, yeah, both have their ups. Like, Doomscar is stronger against Mono Green. Meetup Massacre is a little stronger. Or oh, Path of Peril is a little stronger against White. Although Path of Peril is like in the middle. It's like a poor man's Doomscar. It's different. It's a different card. It can be good. Meetup Massacre is the best thing against White in terms of sweepers. And to be fair, the deck is maybe not as refined as it could be. Maybe there's still things you can do to make this deck um, better against, or like just more consistent perhaps. Um, we worked a lot on it, but we worked on a lot of decks at the same time and maybe there's still room for improvement for sure. And that seems like a beautiful Vanishing Reverse target. Opponent playing Madu colors. I'll play my island and I'll play my Genestius. And hopefully, well, I have a Planeswalker removal, so even a Planeswalker is dealable with. The worst card would be Edgar. Edgar. Okay. All right, we'll do it the hard way then. Okay, we'll do it the hard way. Um, I was about to say, Edgar is kind of difficult to deal with. Yeah. <clears throat> <sighs> okay, okay. Well, that's maybe a weak spot of the deck. We, we are playing white mana, but we don't have any way to get rid of Edgar cleanly. What would be ways? I mean, we could play Borrow Time. Is that the card? You know, the Oblivion Ring in Midnight Hunt? I don't even know. I mean, you could play Skyclave Apparition, but that one is not so good with your sweepers. Well, wow, what is going on? This is also a very annoying card. Maybe I can find a Doomscar. I'm, yeah. Opponents playing a Madu deck with a bunch of cards that are good against control decks. Or, or turns, I suppose. Okay, yeah, Edgar is also an answer to, to Edgar. Um, that's that's our best answer to, to an opposing Edgar, actually. Yeah, Vanishing Verse, unfortunately, does not exile Eddie. So I could play another spell here to flip my Celestials. Why not, right? Probably gonna discard my Henchgate Pathway. Or my Hall of Storm Giants. Nah, I'll just go for all the value. Playing against the Mado deck, I'll just keep my land in hand. But I might just discard it anyways if I draw a good spell here. Okay. Looking good, looking good. Okay, a little annoying, but not the worst. I can Fateful Absence that thing. Opponent has really a deck with a lot of strong threats against control. That seems to be the aim here. Or against turns, I should say. Although Edgar isn't the best against turns. But Edgar is uh, pretty good. 
against Agrodex. I think. Yeah. It's a grindy matchup. I don't necessarily want to give them a clue. I think it's between Doomsky and Fateful Absence here for me. I think I'll take the Fateful Absence away. If they play another threat here, I could just do nothing and uh, Doomsky in my turn. Hmm. Not sure. I'm on fifteen. No, right, I'll just kill it. And yeah, we're playing one copy of Field of Ruin for that face saving, which is a really annoying card. Good that I have my sword coming. My opponent has some powerful magic cards in their deck. I like it. Lots of rares. I like what my opponent's doing here. It's kind of cool. Alright, two more spells in hand. Perhaps removal spells. Mm, I would like to attack. And just use my seven mana to get memory deluge going. And the way we win this game is probably via card advantage. Like we're gonna have Edgar's just nullifying its, uh, each other. And uh, yeah, I have the deluge going here. My opponent's a little low on cards. Didn't want to do that. Sure, I'll let him attack because I could feel of ruin here, but I just wanna. To take, take take free damage, right? Doesn't matter. Uh, take an untapped land then. Eddie, come back from the dead. What is our Eddie doing? Is Eddie attacking? Eddie is staying back. I'm on 13. I think Eddie is just staying back, but this one is attacking. What else am I doing this turn? Field of Ruin. Celestius, I can activate as a sorcery. I can suspend some of these. Fortel. I have all of the Storm Giants I can keep up. I'm surely going to. Field of Ruin this. Um, I don't need that much blue mana. Let's tap this and this. Hotel this. Play this. Pass the turn. I'm I'm up on cards. I'm in a relaxed position. I don't need to rush anything with the Celestials to find our stuff. Next turn I'm probably going to start activating it. This turn we just, yeah. Stabilize. I hope my opponent doesn't have a way to exile my Edgar. Okay. You got it. Edgar is such a house when you don't have a way. Like, just can't attack on the ground anymore. Mid range, as is my opponent. Oh, mm -hmm. okay. I don't think I. Uh, we're only playing two planes here, so lost the land there. That's not a big deal. All right, let's find horror or card advantage. Take action, please. Joy disruption. Are you gone? I'll make another land drop. Yeah. Um, 
And we keep the Doomscar in hand. I don't think I'm gonna need a second one. Oh, beautiful. And I might just wanna discard it, to be honest with you. Or I'll discard a land. I'll discard the land. Yeah, I feel, I'm feeling good about this game. It's just a matter of time, I would say. Block. Okay, that's fine. I'm just gonna blow that one up because Edgar's coffin. Edgar's coffin costs four mana, unfortunately, so Potable ain't doing it. Um, but yeah, Edgar, Edgar's coffin. I have so much stuff to discard now. I could just pull, use this one. No, I'm, I'm just gonna use this. Take out. Oh, that's a good one. Blow up this Edgar, play my Desert Beach. Now they have to Legendary Roll one out. And pass. Sweet. And they've seen enough. All right. Madu mid range. Um, Tesla Talents seems lackluster. Edgar seems very good. Especially because I kind of need it for their Edgar. Disdainful Stroke seems amazing. Um, I didn't see anything worth portable holding besides the curtains, I guess. I don't know, they might have Skyclave Shade in the sideboard. That, that's a nice target. But we also have Vanishing Verse. So, horror, not sure how good horror is. Uh, I think it's fine to just kill people with Edgar. These mid-range decks really struggle against Edgar, I think. So I think we can go down one horror. It just the card can be a liability, you know, and you don't want to draw the second one usually. It's very expensive. You don't have stuff like unexpected windfall here to make it a little bit more, you know, quicker, speed it up. Uh, I do like Behold. I do think I like Power Word Kill. Yes, they have dragons. Um, they also have this thing. They have this thing. They might have Reckless Storm Seeker. Faithful Absence is the clean answer. Um, but Fate for Athens gives, that, gives them a clue and like in a grindy matchup like that, I don't really want to give them a clue. So yeah, I think this looks fine. Chalestious, yep, 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 yep. Doomscar four times, maybe a little too much on that front. Um, but I don't like any of my sideboard cards very much either. Could play like another Absence. No, I think I like it this way. We're gonna we're gonna see for game two what they bring to the table, and then uh, move on from there. I hope you don't mind explaining my thoughts in depth. Um, I've I've heard good feedback about that, and I'll just keep continuing explaining everything. Um, is the, if there's anything I can improve in the video, anything I can do to make the experience uh, more watchable or even better. <laughs> Let me know in the comments below. Thanks. And thanks for watching, of course. All right, push up game number two. We're one up. Pwn's taking some time here. Are they thinking about putting me on the play? With cards like Go Blank, Duress, where you trim down on the opponent's hand. Wouldn't be the first time that that happened and constructed that someone the other player on the play when they're playing a lot of discard themselves certainly a valid strategy and yeah we're surely expecting some go blanks some duresses all the cards that are good against turns can be brought in against control as well yeah to be fair my team and i we weren't putting much time oh well we considered these black white black snow type of decks but we also 
expected turns to be like 30 like i said it's more than 40 percent 50 percent even other people said 30 percent and so on like turns is going to be a quick uh, a big thing at the set championship and we kind of identified that to beat turns you have to play counter spells you have to have test of talents you have to have those counter spells just playing creatures and discard spells was not enough in our opinion because they have so much card draw that they just draw out of it. They have so many good top decks. They just find one expressive iteration. All of a sudden, they have a windfall again. They divide by zero into arcane teachings after you discard them a bunch, and then they just draw free because you have a stacked hand and they don't, right? So they have so many ways to get ar around the discard. Go blank is good. Duress is good. But they're, mm, they're just they're, they're, they're no test of talents, let's say. All right, looks like my opponent's... I uh, had enough and just disconnected, went to do something different. Fine, fine by me. I'll take it. Um, to be fair, looked like we with the counter spells, with the blue card draw, with the efficient removal, and Edgar ourselves were quite favored in that particular matchup. But to be fair, I think what you really have to do if you want to play like Duress Scorpion, you have to have a lot of pressure or an immense amount of these effects to really make even top decks worse. To really stifle your opponent somehow. So if you have, I mean, if you have Curtains, Graveyard Trespasser, all these discard effects, you might work your opponent, your turns opponent so much down that even if they top deck some card advantage, they won't get back into it. But it's difficult. Especially on the draw, when you don't have time to even cast all that discard before they cast their card draw spells. Mm. Yeah, we just go ahead and play Desert Beach here on turn one. Followed up by a Hall of Storm Giants. Okay, we're playing some interesting deck. Yeah, I'll just always use my mana here for Fortel. If they tap themselves out for like a Stowaway or Delver or what have you. And this way I can just chill as just portable, so that's beautiful too. Yeah, I'm, I'm just going to do that. That seems like an excellent play. I could keep up counter spells, but uh, likely my opponent playing the blue instant speed heavy deck will just pass on me anyways, right? And even better against Celestius. Get to draw some cards when they pass the turn. All right, pass on them. Play Javari Ruins, make my land drop, see what they got. Spectral Adversary. Really not a card that's threatening to me. I'm thinking about casting Memory Deluge right here. Why not? Okay. I don't want to, like, they could have Syncopate. That would be an annoying card. Everything coming up my way here. Um, I'm just gonna Doomscar. We have Wash Away up in case they have a counter spell that. <laughs> this costs free. Okay, I'll just pay. Fine. Geist Light Snare, yeah. I was thinking about that card, but there's just not enough spirits in the format quite yet. And the mana in like blue white, for example, is kind of tough. You'd rather play like mono white or mono green, just beat your opponent down instead of trying to mox up your mana with like a blue white spirit stack. That was uh, my impression when I looked into that archetype. So they're shocked here. Maybe they got a memory delusion. Spectre adversary number two. We have a portable hole in hand. I don't think I mind this. And we'll just keep my counter spell. Ah. Okay. I'm so confused right now. This phases out, shouldn't this come back? <laughs> Arena? 
<laughs> let's see what happens. I mean, um, what? Avalanche corner. This card can deal some damage. Okay, I'll just fit for absences. Permanents that phase out anything attached to them is treated as if they don't exist. Just have to control this next turn. I'm very confused. I'm ve I think everything just stays in exile, I suppose. Anyways. I think I'll just stabilize before I'm starting to play horror. I want to go this game, uh, have this game go in a way where I'm like, where I'm casting horror and they hit me for free all the time while they have like fading hope, divide by zero and stuff like that. Sure, sure, sure. <laughs> I can bounce the whole. Like, uh, like, uh, could come up. I mean, I could bounce the portable hole with the horror ability and then get some value. Yeah, I'll just discard the land. Discard the land. I'm at 16 life. I think it's two cards left. Like divide by zero would be certainly annoying. Divide by zero is always going to be annoying. And I just take like worst case. I'll think the divide by zero is obviously annoying, but I don't know. It's it's like fine. And they already used two fading hope. They have divide here. Okay, they don't. That's probably game. Oh, it's surely game, I would say. <laughs> um, trying to face out my horror, huh? I'll take that portable hole again. Feels a little empty in there. Just wanna fill it up. Hope you don't mind. Return target non land permanent. Clue. Nice. Thanks. Oh, what? Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. Really? Do I? I mean... I got a full four. I'm tempted to just let that happen, honestly. Like, I'm never ever gonna lose this game. <sighs> On the other hand, 
I can just save my horror here if I fade for absence it. Uh, I have a 4-4, four, four, I have a horror. I have so much stuff to do with my mana anyways. Like I can do this, I can do this. And honestly, just give me a 4-4. Four, four. I'm not attached. <laughs> okay, I suppose I did the winning line. Okay, that's a matchup I haven't played before. Um, counter spells seem a little clunky, especially the three mana kind. Portable Hole seems amazing. Hermit seems pretty good. Poet Curl looks also very nice. Vanishing Curl is looking good. I'll go down on these. I don't think there's anything threatening big that I have to worry about. Um. Test of Talents, I'll just cut them all. I'm not sure about Test of Talents. Of course, if we're in a counter situation, definitely can be nice. Certainly want the Hermit over any of the counter spells. Powered Kill seems good. Doomscar is a question mark. Edgar is a question mark. Um, Edgar doesn't seem very good against what my opponent's been doing here. Huh? These things fly mostly. Certainly trim one. Horror, horror seems a little better, but it's weak to fading hope. Ray of Enfemblement, actually? Delver, Ascendant Spirit, Spectral Adversary, Stowaway perhaps, Hermits of them. Yeah, I'll play Ray, let's go. Seems kind of great. I'll play a couple of tests. Doomscar seems all right. Behold and the third ray is an option. We have a lot of room. Uh, maybe, I, maybe I could trim down the Faithful Absence. It seems like a very grindy matchup. Like, it could certainly happen that they counter my card draw spells. And then, yeah. I don't know, Doomscar is also very expensive. I'll play Faithful Absence on the draw. Sunset Reverie. I feel like Sunset Reverie can be good, potentially. But most of the things have evasion. Most of the things fly. So it's a little risky. Yeah, this is a keep. It's close. But if I draw one land, I'm, I'm in a good spot. And having Doomscore and Fortel against the creature deck is just so nice. Okay. The turn one flip. Not bad, not bad. Oh no, my Field of Ruin doesn't get me anything anymore. <laughs> Oopsie. Um, yeah. I was like thinking does it matter much what I do here. I don't think so. Alright, alright, I mean this is a lot of pressure. Ooh, okay. Uh, I smell I smell uh Geistlight Snare or whatever it's called. Um What do I bait with? I'm certainly not gonna play Doomscar. I think I'll just upkeep powered kill the delve of secrets. If I play Celestius, they can just use their mana to counter. Jesus Christ. That's bad. Okay. Flip, flip. Yeah, that's pretty good. Okay. So if you if you're telling me you don't have an untapped land here, I get to resolve Doomscar. I'm not so lucky, am I? Surely I'm not. Yeah. <laughs> That's game. Wow. That was very impressive. I mean, having one mana free two flyers <laughs> and two counter spells on the play. Yeah. That is gonna bring you the victory.
Edgar looked pretty horrific there. I don't think I even want the one copy. I mean, the play faces Haven, I suppose. And against especially against exactly faces Haven, it's like that. That stop. My my deck is kind of mediocre against faces Haven right now. I don't have in my removal space. You don't kill it besides absence. Doomscar doesn't kill it either. Maybe I just want the absence number two though. Like that kills faces Haven too. Kills any of the the, slur, the small creatures. Hallelujah! What was wow? That, that was one hell of a draw. I mean, if I'm playing a mono blue deck, I'm not looking to play against aggressive decks, right? Like mono blue is usually always has been a dog against like mono white or mono red or mono green or what have you because they just stomp you in. You, your creature size isn't as good and you don't have good removal but what mono blue usually wants to be playing against like small slow control decks right and we are one of those so my opponent perhaps happy about meeting me here here you see the awkwardness of hollow storm giants vanishing verse hollow storm giants is just so nice to have in the late game against like faces haven for example if you just have seven mana haul up you can't attack anymore you know just the threat of activation is so good Okay. They don't have a one drop. Oh, they do. Did they just draw it? Interesting. Uh huh. Hex proof. Well, well, well. No land drops. Should I doom scuff or tell? You sure about that? That was a, a trait I'm definitely... Okay. Huh. I'm actually just going to counter that, I think. Because my hand is kind of built in a way that I don't have any card advantage. Um, which makes me the aggressor in a sense in this game. Like I, I'm realizing my position I have a lot of hexproof spells. <laughs> it's not so good against Doomscar. They don't even have that many counter spells. Couple of guy slide snares, test of talents. No sword comics, no divide by zero. Hermit. I have a lot of test of talents, I suppose. So Oh, you don't want to attack, I think. I'm just Dead 17, five attacks. I'm at 20. Let's see, let's see what happens. It's a little awkward that I drew a second Doomscar. It's like the worst card when I'm trying to beat a beat down. But yeah, I mean, they have all these hexproof spells. They don't have the mana to protect their things though. And I'm just gonna kill them a turn earlier. This taps a creature. <laughs> I suppose that's an option. Didn't go for. Uh, are we foretelling again? I don't think so. We might find Celestius, just discard this card or something. That's an excellent draw. <laughs> Maybe the best draw in my deck. Tap my thing. I mean, Resculpt, mm -mm, that doesn't seem like, I mean, they had Fading Orb, yeah. I guess they, they had Fading Orb, that's kind of like a combo, isn't it? So here can Vanishing Verse, and this there, I saw a card from the graveyard. Go ahead then, 
I guess. Oh, wait a second. Should maybe do things with trigger on the stack because they, they're able to cast. So if they have like a one mana counter spell on top or something or, or hex split. So I cast this, they cast that. I can then. Yeah. Yeah. They cast, I hermit counter. They tapped out. Which then I will vanishing burst the delver. Get the hermit back, put them to five. I have six power in play, and they have these two in hand. Sounds good to me. <gasps> no! Oh no, that was that was punt. I, oh. oh, that's such a weird wording, isn't it? It's it doesn't target on the trigger. Oh, that that is stupid. Okay, I learned something there, I suppose. They, they, could, they could just exile my hermit because it doesn't target with the trigger on the stack. Okay, learn something. Unusual card. We drew the best card in our deck. Uh, third Doomscar. Woo! God, if I, I might lose this game because of that. I mean, imagine I had a 2 2 hermit right here. <laughs> oh my god. If I had a hermit. This gives O plus three. They already used three of them. Yeah. They 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 sorry, they if you don't know they need to kick to give hex proof. So it's like a two mana hex proof spell, which is pretty Clunky, I'd say. Not very efficient. <laughs> you just have a flat rate of these. If I draw one more untapped land, I have a 7-7. Seven, seven. Well, yeah. Works. I'm gonna give uh, a toughness boost. I'll, I won't pop my Doomscar. I'd rather keep my 4-4 around. Because they have to jump block next turn if they don't have anything. Are they attacking me? Wow. Okay. If I draw an untapped land, I have two lethal creatures coming at them. Did they exile another vanishing mode? Can you exile a creature? No creatures in the bin, I guess. Haha, <laughs> it's only instant. Funny. Hmm. Okay. Tap land. Spectral adversary would be pretty sick. <laughs> oh, funny. <laughs> oh, beautiful. Um. Yeah, they just have to chump block, so who cares? Spectre Adversary gets them out of this, I suppose. But they still have to jump block with the Adversary then. They can phase out my 4-4 four four and jump block with the Adversary. So now they need another blocker or something. All right, got him. Sweet. All right. Yeah. Diamond 2 also. All right. I think that's going to be it for today. Um, next up is going to be one of the other decks I tried for, or I intensively tested for the Insert Sand Championship. Let's, let's honor my hard work a little bit. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, it was fun to show you off this Esper White deck. It's a little inconsistent, but very powerful and gives you all of a sudden a new tool in this rather stale metagame in standard. Highly recommend. Uh, I'm going to put the deck list in the description for you guys. And uh, yeah, check it out and see you in the next video. Have a good one. Bye bye.